there's going to be guys, and I'm hoping it's not me, but there are going to be guys that do not catch a limit. Maybe not even in both days, low key. All right, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back. I'm sitting here uh, looking at a box. I just got a bunch of jigs. Buck, I just sent me going through all the goodies, all kind of goodies in here. That's for another day. Today, I'm here to talk to you guys about the schedule, man. The schedule released a little while ago. I didn't jump right on top of it right away. I wanted to kind of chew things over, so to speak, um, and just kind of, you know, really look in depth at the schedule, where we're going, the times of year, and all that good stuff. And uh, so now, I'm going to bring you guys my thoughts, man. So, all right, we're going to jump into it. 2024, I think we're kicking this season off earlier than we ever have. I don't think we've ever started this early. And so, the first place we're going to is Toledo Bend. And I'm looking at my phone here so I can get all the dates and all this correct. So, January 30th through February 4th. Toledo Bend, which is, in, which is on the border of Louisiana and Texas. I think that tournament has the potential to be the coldest tournament we've ever fished in BPT history, man. We went to Darbon that one year in February. It snowed. Last year in March at Tennessee, that's, it was freezing. Uh, and that was in March. So to start this early, I think we're kind of flirting the line right there. I mean, it, it very well could be 75, 80 as well. But Toledo Bend, let's talk about the fishery, the, 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 the history of it. I mean, it's a, it's a world-renowned destination, man. Everybody knows about Toledo Bend. I've actually only been there one time. We had a Bassmaster Elite Series there in 2017. John Murray won that tournament. Uh, I had a decent finish in that tournament. I do remember it was during a shad spawn when we were there. So we're going to be a lot earlier than that. But apparently the grass has grown back in that lake really well. And the lake's really healthy and, and doing really good. And they're putting up some big stringers. And so that ought to be a fun event with the exception of the weather, man, which is always a factor. And historically, when MLF rolls into town, the weather just gets, it just gets goofy, man. So I'm hoping that's not the case. A lot of different things are gonna play there. A lot of timber in the lake. Um, the grass is obviously growing again, so that's gonna be a big factor. Um, and then, you know, there's some outliers, man. Guys that know how to run way up that river and they catch them in that river up there. Um, there's just so many different ways that they can be caught there on Salida Bend. I will definitely be spending some time over there this fall, trying to learn and brush up on the lake a little bit. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to that one. So moving, moving right along. Stop number two. We are going to Santee Cooper in South Carolina, February 20th through the 25th. Again, I think we're flirting on that line of it being just astronomically cold and fishing sucking or beautiful weather, super strong pre-spawn and us smashing. It's going to be one of the two. It's right up it's right up in there. And I don't really know how to call that one, man. A lake I've never been to. I've been fishing now for 10 years professionally and I've never been to Santee Cooper. It's never showed up on the schedule of any of the events I fish, whether it was Bass Opens, the Elites, the FLW Tour, Toyota Series, MLF, BPT, I mean, I've been, I fished them all and I've never been to Santee Cooper. And so I'm excited to go somewhere new. I love going new places. Santee Cooper, another destination, world-class big bass fishery. There's been a couple big events over the last couple of years. The elites have been, I think, twice in the last three years. And you guys see the waste that they put out, man. Of course, they've been at a much better time, in my opinion, uh, closer to the spawn. So I think that one has a strong potential to be tough, man, which I like tough tournaments too. So that's going to be an interesting one. Probably be some 10-pounders caught. Hopefully, I'll grab a hold of one. All right, next one. We got uh, the Red Crest, which is at Lay Lake. And thank God your boy made it. We just slid in that thing, man. We got into that Red Crest. Lay Lake, Birmingham, Alabama, March 14th through the 17th. Getting a little closer to home. I have fished Lay Lake. I don't know it very well, but I've been out there three, four, five times. I think that lake during that week is probably has the most and the best potential to catch the best bags that lake has to offer. Um, that should be primo hardcore pre-spawn for largemouth. That lake's a pretty strong largemouth fishery. And then it also has some really good spots. It's just a matter of if they want to participate or not. You know, uh, there's going to be a lot of flipping, grass mats, a lot of swim jigs going on. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of jerk bait fishing going on. And then there'll have to be a whole section of guys exclusively targeting spotted bass 
in the upper reaches of the lake, in the river, and things like that. My boy DC will likely be up there, right? He knows that lake really good. Catching them big spotted bass, man, it puts them out. So what am I gonna do? I don't know yet. You know, I'm, I'm naturally a largemouth guy, but I'll do whatever I gotta do to do what I gotta do. So it's gonna be an interesting one. We're gonna see how it, how, how it all shakes out. So that's gonna be Redcrest. Right after Redcrest, we go to the great state of Tennessee and we're going up north to Del Hollow. Um, this is one I'm really excited about. Been to Del Hollow just once, but the quality of fish, both largemouth and smallmouth both, that live in that lake is pretty phenomenal. We're probably not gonna see many bass over the five pound mark, but those three to four and a halfs are gonna be plentiful, man. Like I think 18 pounds, 19 pounds will be quite common actually. That place is just stout, man. And it uh, also has some of the biggest crappie I've ever seen. So shout out to Del Hollow. I like, I like going up there. I'm looking forward to, to that one as well. And that's stop number three. So stop number four is Lake Eufaula in Oklahoma. Eufaula, Oklahoma. Now the Invitational was there this year. I fished it. I had a sneaky suspicion. I didn't know it, but it showed up on the Invitational schedule. I had never been there. I wanted to go there just because there's always the potential of. And lo and behold, look at that. The very next season, here we now go for the BPT. Now the date range on this tournament, April 30th through May 5th, that's gonna be a unique time. There'll probably be a handful of fish still spawning, probably. But then you also have shad spawn going on. Then you'll also have post spawn, offshore fishing going on. I mean, there's just no telling what will happen in that event. Lake Eufaula has some very, very good fish in it. Very good fish in it. I was, I was thoroughly impressed with the quality that lives in that lake, man. So um, that's going to be a good event. I'm excited to see just the kind of weights it'll take to make the cut over there. And, uh, you know, see how, see how it goes. Up next will be heavy hitters, which I did not make. Got to catch bigs, man. I didn't catch a lot of big fish this year. And so I did not make heavy hitters, but 30 of the 80 guys did. And so they're going to be going down to Kissimmee, Florida, May 18th through May 23rd. Now I'm going to say something, Florida. My Floridians out there, y'all don't get mad at me, but keep it real. Florida fish is far better, far better in the late spring, early summer than it ever will in that pre-spawn, that December, January, February, even the first part of March. And that's when every tournament trail wants to have a tournament in Florida. And it really fishes better later. So this tournament right here in, in, in Kissimmee in May, these boys are about to drop some hammers on the scale. Because that's when the big ones show up, man. You know, they're post-spawn. They get on them brim beds real hard out there in the lily pads out in the, and on those grass flats. And that's when those really big fish start biting. And you see stringers, a lot of 30, 35s. And it's never in February, March. It's always in May, June. I watch this stuff online all the time. They have a tournament down there June 1st. You look at the weights, and it's like, oh, my God. Is that even the same lake that I fished seven times? Cause I ain't never caught a nine pounder and my man had three of them. Like that's, that's Florida fishing for you. So it's going to be wild, man. That's going to be a really good tournament. Those guys are going to smash moving down the road. All right. Now this is the tournament I'm most excited for, for next year. And it's this Chowan river. Okay. Never heard of it. Never been to it. All I know is I've heard that they drop bags over there. Okay. And it's a river system. I like fishing river systems. I grew up fishing river systems. So that right there is the tournament I'm most excited about. I've just done a very little bit of research on it thus far. And it sounds like it's quite the place. Um, I don't know if the time frame we're going is the best or not. It's going to be post-spawn there. Um, but a lot of times post-spawn, they're eating. They're, they're trying to get back fat after spawning. Could be really good fishing. Could also be a little bit tough. Have a little couple fish, goofy, just got done spawning. Might even be like the very tail end of a few fish spawning. But uh, that one, that one, that one has a lot of good potential, man. I'm excited about that. Eden 10, North Carolina is where that's gonna be. Never, never heard of it, man. So shout out to MLF for going to new places. And I'm not knocking Bassmaster. Uh, I'm just saying it is very enjoyable to go to new places. All these other places on here, even on our schedule. Not only have I heard of, I've been to most of them. 
And uh, I just like going to new places, man. So Dell Hall is a new one. Um, Santee Cooper is a new one for me, you know, but I just don't like going to these same places over and over and over again. I just don't like doing that. So after the Chowan River, we go to another river system. We slide down to uh, Virginia or slide up. We slide up to Virginia, excuse me. Stage six is going to be at the James River, Richmond, Virginia. Been to the James one time. Um, we're going in June, June 25th through June 30th. The James kicked my butt the last time I was there, but I was there in August. Very tough fishing at the time. But again, I've been keeping up with the records of tournaments over there on the James River, and that place is healthy, man. It's putting out some really, really quality fish. And so I'm looking forward to that one. Again, it's a tidal fishery. I grew up fishing tidal fisheries. These places are nothing like the California Delta, but they are tidal. And so they do have some similarities. Um, again, just a nice change up, nice change of pace. Uh, new scenery, a new state, uh, just all that good stuff, man. So we are going to Richmond, Virginia on that. James River, that's going to be good. Then we, we wrap up the season, last but not least, at the St. Lawrence River. Now, I'm going to say this, and y'all y'all don't get too mad at me. I'm tired of seeing tournaments on St. Lawrence River. I'm just going to keep it a brick, all the way real. I love the St. Lawrence River. Phenomenal fishery. Uh, it's, in, it's, it's, it's in the top, dude. It's, it's a top three fishery in our country. You cannot doubt it. But we are just holding way too many big events on the St. Lawrence River, Lake Ontario, that system, that region right there. And honestly, I think it's having a little detriment on, on the fishery, man. Um, whether it's a, a Open, a Toyota Series, the Elite, or the MLF, man, all that fishing pressure, smallmouth are very sensitive. And for my guys that fish smallmouth tournaments, y'all know, Sometimes you catch these fish, you put them in a live well, two minutes later he's dead. I've caught him, held him up, take a nice cheesy pitcher, five and a half pounder, he's super excited, heck yeah bro, look at this fish. You put him back in the water and he's dead. Why that is, I don't know. They're just a sensitive species. Um, and so we just gotta be careful, man, and we gotta take care of these places. The catch, weigh, and release 100% helps, but nevertheless, I told you, I just took a pitcher with one and the sucker died. Put it back in the water, it was dead, I'm like, damn. You know, uh, we just got to be a little more careful and responsible as tournament anglers. But uh, that's going to be a hell of an event. It's going to take some serious weight to win that tournament. It's going to take some serious weight to make the cut. Probably like 20 pounds a day. 40 pounds just to make the cut. It'd be my long-term, from a far view, guess on that. But uh, again, man, St. Lawrence River, top top tier fishery. The largemouth in that place is phenomenal. But we never find out because you almost can't compete with the largemouth. But I have been there um, just farting around with the homies fishing largemouth, and it's impressive, man. Impressive. But uh, St. Lawrence River, we going back. I'm going to have a good time there, nevertheless. But uh, that wraps it up, man. That's the 2024 schedule. Hang on, hang on. My boy got some questions for me before he lets me go on, on, uh, on the schedule. Let me hear it, Colin. All right. So the first one was, which one are you most looking forward to? Oh, I already answered it, huh? Said that. Dang. I, 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 Chowan River. I'm looking. All right, hey, don't give me the line, bro. My mama say, don't give me the line. I don't know how you pronounce it. Y'all in the comments, let me know. All my, all my, my North Carolina folks, is it Chowan or Chowan River? Y'all let me know. The phonetic spelling, please. All right, most weight to win. Most weight to win the tournament for, for two days. It's gonna yeah, have to be. Yeah, the All right, let me look at the schedule. Most weight. <laughs> oh, tough, man. That's a tough one, very tough one. If I had to guess, the most weight it's gonna take to win is gonna have to be, uh, oh, that's tough. I'm torn between Toledo Ben and Santee Cooper. I'm gonna pick. If Santee Cooper is on, you think it's gonna be Santee Cooper? If Santee Cooper is fishing good, it'll be Santee Cooper. But the weather, man, it's just so hard to pick. So it's, it's I'm picking one of the two, Santee or uh, Toledo Ben. I'm going to go with Toledo Bend. My gut's telling me Toledo Bend. All right, and the last one is, which tournament is going to be the biggest grind and why? The biggest grind and why? What tournament's going to be the biggest grind? Let's look. Let's look. <laughs> it's so crazy because all these questions are keep going right back to the same two fisheries that I'm torn between. So the biggest grind tournament is probably going to be Santee Cooper because... I've never been to Santee Cooper, but I watch all the tournaments that fish there. 
And even when fishing's good, it seems to me that Santee Cooper's a place where you just don't get many bites. You catch giants, but you ain't catching 30 and 40 a day. So with that being said, and then considering the weather could be crap, water temps could be terrible, and just fishing conditions not good, it's gonna have to be Santee Cooper on the grind. I gotta pick Santee Cooper on the grinder, bro. But I'm definitely going, biggest grind is gonna be Santee Cooper. For my money, Santee Cooper. There's gonna be guys, and I'm hoping it's not me, but there are going to be guys that do not catch a limit. Maybe not even in both days, low key. And then there's gonna be guys that make the cut that do not weigh in 10 bass. There'll be guys that make the cut that weigh in six or seven bass, but they had like four one day for 23, 24, you know what I'm saying? And then the next day they only caught one seven pounder or something, you know? And they made the cut with 30 pounds. It'll, you'll, you'll see that. So do you think that's gonna be the lowest cut weight? To no. Make to make no, I don't think it'll be the lowest cut weight only because the fish are so big, man. You go to Santee and in two days you catch six keepers in February, the potential of them six weighing like 30 is, is there. Yeah. I mean, it, it could happen. And it might take less than 30 to make the cut elsewhere, you know? Yeah. So it's, that's, going, that's, the most you, that's the most interesting tournament on the schedule by far is going to be Santee Cooper. And it's because of the time frame in which we're going. It's gonna make the, I don't think I don't think there's been a derb of this caliber there that early ever. And so it's gonna be real interesting. That's it. That's it. All right, y'all. Y'all know the rest, man. Drop me a comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, man. We appreciate y'all. I'm looking forward to getting the season kicked off. I'm here in my shop, chilling, looking at both my boats. It's time to go fishing. I'll see y'all on the water.